Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So a few weeks ago, I got a question on one of my sawmill review videos for this Wood Windmills HM122. Um, and the viewer was asking why Woodland Mills designs the track so that the sawmill rolls on a sharp square edge uh, of the track instead of the rounded edge. And they actually were kind of confused, thought maybe Woodland Mills drilled the holes in the wrong places on their track because, you know, when you follow the instructions for assembly, you're going to end up with this uh, sharp edge of the track up and a rounded edge down in. So we're going to talk about that in today's video. This is going to be one of those videos where there's a lot of talking about a very minute detail of the sawmill, um, but I think it's kind of interesting. So stick around and we'll get started. Okay, so if you look closely at uh, Woodland Mill Sawmill, um, you'll notice that uh, the wheels on the trolley have a, a slot cut in them and it has a nice radius uh, inner, inner edge. Uh, yet the track that these wheels are rolling on has a squared off edge and I'll throw in some uh, overlay video so you can see that in more detail and I remember you know when I used to follow the Woodland Mills Facebook group there was a lot of confusion about this a lot of questions about that and like I said I had a viewer uh, respond to one of my videos with with the same concerns um, but this is actually totally normal it's done by design and there's uh, a couple reasons why they do it this way and so we'll start off with the most fundamental reason and I've got a little piece of uh, scrap angle iron I pulled out of my scrap bucket to, to talk about this. Um, when companies manufacture angle iron, and I'm talking about a steel supplier, not Woodland Mills, because Woodland Mills is not, you know, uh, forging their own, their own iron work. Uh, they're taking off the shelf structural steel components. And so when companies, uh, steel companies uh, create structural steel components like, like angle iron, um, they, they're basically taking a red hot uh, piece, piece of steel and rolling it through a series of dies to get it into the desired shape. And in the case of angle iron, there's some really important dimensions and really tight tolerances that they have to follow. And then there are other things that don't even matter and they don't worry about. And so, you know, really what's going to matter for angle iron is first, you want this to be as close to a perfect 90 degree angle as possible. So that's one of the very tight tolerances they shoot for. Uh, the second one is going to be the thickness of, of the uh, two sides of the angle. Um, that's important for structural reasons, of course. And then finally, it's going to be the dimension of the flats on, on each side of the angle. And, and those are all the key dimensions. Those are all uh, very relevant to the structural steel uses and fabrication uses of the angle iron. Um, but one of the last things that kind of falls out of the wash is going to be what happens on these edges here okay and pretty much every piece of uh, angle iron i've ever bought has uh, some type of a rounded edge here um, and they probably do this just to make handling a little bit nicer but there's really no specific radius here or if there is they never really meet it in manufacturing when they're they're rolling out these shapes and so uh, this is this is kind of the feature I don't want to even call it a dimension, but this is really the feature of an angle iron that just comes out in the wash. After they're done rolling this out and they're working real hard to get the angle and the dimensions and the thickness right, you know, they're just doing a very basic roll on the edge here to, to smooth this out and round it. But there's really no tolerance to this. Every piece of angle iron you pick up is going to be a little bit different. There's probably going to be differences from one side to the other. Um, and so, uh, that's kind of the fundamental thing that's going to lead into our other arguments. Um, and that is when Woodland Mills uh, starts to take off the shelf structural steel angle iron like this and build it into a track where they want to have good tolerances for both the track assembly and then the lumber milling you're going to do on the sawmill, they cannot count on this edge to have any sort of consistency, repeatability. Um, from piece to piece, from batch to batch, from supplier to supplier. And so the first thing Woodland Mills is gonna to have to do is they're gonna to have to put some type of a controlled shape on the edge that they want the sawmill trolley to ride on, okay? That's the only hope to get consistent, repeatable results both for manufacturing assembly and then uh, lumber production, okay? So uh, uh, they cannot use this factory, this steel mill factory edge, which is on the track if you look on the inside of the edge that's a pretty much standard mill edge on an angle iron 
no tolerances, just a rough rounded shape. Um, when they machine this other edge flat, that is their attempt to come up with a good, dependable, dimensional track that we can rely on for all of those other steps down the line. And so they're going to mill this, first of all, to take out the random rounded uh, edge that the, the steel mill puts on there. And then they're also going to mill it down to give us a standard, repeatable height uh, for the track um, so that all the tracks are the same and, and everything is consistent. Okay, so that's really the first reason in all of this. What comes out of the, the steel mill is not consistent, it's not usable. Woodland Mills has to do something to get that nice, repeatable, consistent edge for the trolley to roll on. And so that's why we have different edges on the, the angle on the track. Um, now, the reason they go to a square edge, uh, there's, a, there's a couple different nuances to that. Um, really, first of all, if you've ever worked in a machine shop or know anything about engineering and fabrication, um, if you were looking to take a piece of angle iron and put some kind of a consistent dimension and shape on one of the edges, and you want to do that with standard milling and machining procedures, uh, really the most repeatable, quickest, easiest way to do that and get good results is just to machine it flat, okay? Uh, it would be possible to machine a perfectly uh, rounded, uh, radiused edge on, on angle, but that is going to be much more complicated. It's going to involve different types of tools. It's a different procedure. It's a procedure that has more error and more slop in it. And if you want to do that right, it's going to be more expensive. Okay, so you know, they could put a rounded edge on here, but it's going to be ridiculous to try that. Um, and then we get to the final reason, and this is more specific to sawmills, um, but you know, maybe has some general, general, general concepts behind it. You really wouldn't want a rounded edge to have the radius matching the radius cut into the, the wheels there. Uh, for a couple reasons. The first of all is friction. If you want that wheel to roll smoothly uh, down a track, you want to really minimize the contact points between that wheel um, and the track. And you know, one way to do that while still keeping the wheel centered on the track and keeping the trolley stable is to have a rounded socket in your wheel that's rolling over a square edge track. Okay, and so that's kind of the first key, key benefit of doing it this way. Um, it's just going to be much less friction much more repeatable results, and it's gonna help keep the wheels and the trolley centered on the track, okay? If you really thought, okay, I could have a rounded edge of my track and a rounded groove in my wheels and hope that that is gonna stay consistent, it's really not. There's gonna be a lot of contact in there's gonna be friction, there's gonna be rubbing. You know, any of the things that create minute levels of uh, uh, error when you're putting together the sawmill, that's going to really make things worse if you've got a rounded groove in your wheel rubbing against a rounded edge track. It's just not going to be great. Uh, so that's really one benefit of this square edge. You're going to get centering, you're going to get nice uh, stability, and you're going to minimize contact between the wheel and the track to reduce your rolling resistance and get nice, nice smooth action as you roll up and down the track. The final reason though, and this is really specific to sawmills. And when you think about it, this makes a lot of sense, is sawdust, okay? Now, Woodland Mills does put some uh, cleaner uh, cables on, uh, on the wheels, and it's just a little, you know, bent piece of, of uh, uh, steel, steel cable wire rope uh, that sticks into the uh, grooves on those wheels. And the idea is that it's gonna clean sawdust out. Obviously, that's not gonna be perfect. Okay, and if you, you know if you've done a lot of milling like I have, you know sawdust is flying everywhere. Some of it's wet. You've got lubricant coming off of the mill. Um, a prime place for contamination to mess things up would be between those wheels and the track. And so when you have a squared off track and a rounded groove in the wheel, as it rolls over, it's going to leave a nice little uh, gap of clearance. And that is really going to aid in minimizing any problems you would get uh, from sawdust, gunk, grime, anything else that is going to get trapped between the wheels uh, and the track. And you know, 
even with the, the cables and the, and the cleaners and the best of our efforts, we know sawdust is flying everywhere. If it could get in there, it's going to get in there. And so by having a little bit of a gap between the wheels and those rounded grooves and the square edge of the track, it's going to really minimize that problem. And it's going to help to a certain extent to uh, get those cables to, to self-clean the wheels as you go around. Okay, so really that's the final reason. And, and this is a cascade of things that go all the way back to the manufacturing of uh, the steel and the mill, and then the production and the assembly of the mill itself and how we put it together. And uh, there's just a whole lot of reasons. So when you see this uh, squared edge on your track, um, you know, and, and if you're concerned about that, well, no, not only is it not a mistake, it's very intentional. It's very intentional for a whole bunch of reasons. And hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this uh, video has been useful. Thanks for watching.